Hi, everybody. On a uh, Thursday morning, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill coming to you from uh, KGW-TV in downtown Portland. And we have ourselves an atmospheric river. One of my coworkers said to me this morning, Rod, you don't use that term a lot. Uh, but this one, I think, is legitimately for all the reasons that the naming of the weather pattern is important, an atmospheric river. And we're talking about taking aim this Saturday through Sunday breaking up into Monday morning. And you can already see this on all of the imagery packages. So this is the water vapor this morning. And see where my arrows are? See this elongated plume of moisture? That's the quintessential definition of an atmospheric river. This is absolutely being driven by the jet stream and taking aim into the Pacific Northwest with the heavier moisture plumes and rain with it taking place Saturday daytime, again, through Sunday into Monday morning. So it's about a two, two and a half day event, uh, depending on what the actual timing ends up being. These atmospheric rivers, because they come from somewhat of a tropical setting, bringing moisture up from the south. Here's Hawaii. This is setting up just north of the Hawaiian Islands. These drive in uh, lifting dew points to 50 degrees. Whenever in our region, especially in Oregon, to, to forecast an inch of rain in a 24-hour period, you almost always have to have a dew point of 50 or higher. That tells you you've got enough water vapor content in the air for that to come down and produce that type of rain. And we're talking about, you know, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of just constant rain streaming into our area, which will come with high snow levels. So here's a snow level projection. 5,000 feet on Friday, and then the moisture that we're talking about tracks in on Saturday and Sunday. Snow levels all the way to 7,000 feet and maybe higher. What does this mean? It means it's going to be all nothing but straight rain over Cascade Passes. It means it would be just straight rain at Timberline Lodge on Mount Hood up at 6,000 feet. And then as the system starts to break up on Monday, snow levels come down. And before you think, okay, that's easy travel, the roadways won't have any snow and ice, and they will not. But remember, you get up into the mountains, you often encounter even heavier rain rates than you saw down in the lower elevations. And that can be an incredible driving hazard all in its own right. So uh, keep that in mind. I don't think any of this is coming in with any uh, alarming wind so to speak, but the rain is going to be something else. So all of this brought to you by the Momentous Wealth Podcast. Listen on Apple Podcasts, listen on Spotify. Investment topics for you to choose from, all timely, updated, and new ones are posted every month. Uh, brought to you by Momentous Wealth Management, a local firm that I use, licensed in Oregon and in Washington. So here is uh, the imagery. This is a, a different IR satellite visual blend. But again, here's Portland. Here's the elongated fetch of moisture. This is what you're looking for. Not, you know, sometimes people throw out the term atmospheric river when basically you've got a strong wrap of moisture around one individual cold front. But a, to me, a true atmospheric river is what you're seeing here. Elongated plume of moisture. It's going to feed into an area for at least a couple of days, maybe three. And that's what we have going on. Here it is on the jet stream map. This isn't overly impressive, but I looked at it, so I thought I would share it. Again, jet stream winds up at flight level, why it's called the jet stream, about 30,000 feet. And this is, uh, third, well, let me go ahead and just rush this into Saturday morning. So right back here, there's a moisture plume coming up from the south. It's going to be joined with this jet stream and this upper trough from the north feeding the upper level winds into it, which will be driving the moisture inland. Here it's taking aim right into our area. This is uh, Saturday. Now we're showing Sunday. And then Monday, it starts to break. See, there's a break right here. Monday's the day that it starts to break up, and then eventually we get out of it. So why it's important that the jet stream drives these atmospheric river events is that when you have winds aloft rushing and clearing air out, you're basically clearing air out aloft because of stronger winds. That produces convective rising air currents down low to fill in the gap. And it's that rising air that condenses the water vapor and produces the rain bloom uh, that we will be experiencing. Okay, on the uh, watch warning map, this is from weather.gov. It's their homepage. All of the watches and warnings from the U.S. currently. And all by the way, the, all the blue colors are tied with cold and in some cases snow across another Arctic outbreak hitting much of the country. I'm sure you've heard about that. But here locally, see the green, light green shades, including the east slopes of the Cascades in Washington, Oregon, and then out toward Pendleton and the blues. 
These are not watches and warnings, but they are posted discussions with the weather service saying we have all this moisture coming. It's going to be relatively warm and mild, high snow levels. So we'll be on guard for uh, snow melt, pushing water into streams. And then, of course, the rain itself. So high water spots statewide absolutely could become a hazard as we track all this rain coming into the weekend. Here's the future radar product uh, from the American GFS model kind of a future cast models we call it on TV. So we're mainly dry on this Thursday. The next shot of rain is going to be coming in the back half of Friday. Here's Friday at 4 p.m. Um, I think this is mostly some passing light rain. This is not really connected to the atmospheric river, but late Friday, Friday evening, night, into Saturday morning, there could be some light rain. And then here we are, the timing of when we actually get into the main plume of rain, that is the atmospheric river is somewhat up in the air. I think it will be at some point during the PM hours of your Saturday. Maybe not as late as 4 PM Saturday, but that's what I'm showing right here. And now if you just look at this area, once it starts at some point Saturday afternoon, here's Saturday evening, here's Saturday night, here's early Sunday. See, the rain has been absolutely steady from where it started along the coast into the valley, absolutely steady. And then by Sunday morning, absolutely widespread all the way out across much of Eastern Washington and Oregon. Let me play this through the day Sunday. Here we are Sunday getting into the afternoon. Still pretty much absolutely steady, at least here on the west side of our state. Here it is Sunday getting into the evening. And then finally Sunday overnight into Monday. Here's Monday morning. Things start to break up. Okay, that's the timing that most all the models are showing. So, of course, the big question is how much rain are we talking about? So here's the first dabble of rain that comes in late Friday, Friday night, Saturday morning. But now as I play this into Saturday, so let me back this up. You're going to see, see these bright colors up here where my mouse is. Here's the atmospheric river. Boom. Look how that just sweeps in with the heavier rain amounts. And by the time we get into Monday morning, this is what we show. This shows three to as much as four inches of rain up and down the Oregon coast, three inches in the Washington coast. Shows a five-inch bullseye down around Bandon, North Bend, Coos Bay area. Shows This doesn't show you snow in the Cascades. And in fact, as we saw earlier, it's going to be rain up above pass level in the Cascades. But heavy rain could cause some flooding or, or mudslide issues in higher terrain. This is the Washington Cascades into the central portion of Washington showing five, six inches. Uh, heavier rain bullseyes in the Oregon Cascades. It shows the Willamette Valley from Kelso Longview picking up three inches to well over two in Portland, Salem, Albany, down into Eugene. I like these moisture amounts. This is the American GFS model. You can make the case that these are underdone, not overdone. Could be five inches of rain at the coast, for example, all total from Saturday through Monday. Certainly over two looks to be a pretty good bet up and down the I-5 corridor. Now, if these moisture amounts hold true, my experience tells me that we would not have, would not have an overly significant flooding event with rivers coming out of the coast range. This is enough that there absolutely could be some rivers coming out, mainly the coast range here in Oregon, pop over their banks and we'd have some flooding. But I don't see all of them doing that. I don't see this being overly a, a widespread concern in terms of river flooding. But absolutely you should expect some ponding on roadways, low level intersections, taking on water. And especially driving at night when you get into like Sunday night, this has been going on for a while. That becomes a real hazard. So please be aware of that and be aware of how widespread reaching all this precipitation is expected to be. Again, I'm not showing any wind right now. Some of the models are showing there could be some 40 to 50 mile per hour winds along the coast late Sunday into Sunday night. But we'll look at that as we get closer. All right, so let's go around the horn. Everybody's going to have rain in the forecast. It's a nice Thursday, by the way. I kind of skipped over today. Mainly dry on this Thursday. A lot of us are going to be getting up to 50 degrees west of the Cascades. It shows Medford 51 Decent Friday. Here's the rain building during the p.m. hours in Medford into Sunday, breaking up Monday. Very mild. Temperature Sunday could be 61 degrees. Wow. How about Central Oregon? Nice day today. Shows mid-40s and bend. Nice day tomorrow, 51. Then the rain develops eventually later in the day or Saturday night into Sunday, breaks up Monday. Again, Central Oregon, plenty warm at night. Daytime highs, mid to upper 50s. Very mild. How about Pendleton? Dry today, 47, dry Friday. Rain late in the day into the evening, Sunday into Monday. Again, very mild. 
Overnight lows in the 40s, daytime highs approaching 60 degrees. Wow, here's Salem. Uh, chance of rain late Friday, absolutely raining on Saturday, Sunday into Monday. This shows temperatures hitting 60, 62. This is not impossible. If the dew point jumps up to 53, 54, we would wake up Sunday morning to a temperature of 56, 57 with it raining and maybe hit 60 degrees. So again, the warmer air carries more moisture. And that's why when we talk about these high rain amounts with these atmospheric rivers, that they almost always come with very mild temps. Eugene's going to be similar. Look at the 60 potential on Saturday, Sunday into Monday. And the overnight lows, if anything, will be warmer than 49 on Sunday, which is what that shows. North Bend, remember we had the four or five inch rain bullseyes down in this area with the rain getting going Saturday, Sunday into Monday. And again, pretty mild temperatures, about 60 degrees for a high. That story is going to be just as wet, just not quite as warm. But 57 on Sunday into Monday. All right. Up in Seattle, you've got a better chance of rain up here being more substantial Friday and absolutely right in the get-go from Saturday into Monday. But even up in Seattle, we're talking mid-50s, overnight lows well up into the 40s. I hope you get this point. High snow levels, drenching rainfall for hours and hours and hours. And with all of that said, here's my Portland seven-day forecast, courtesy of Hazel Dell Tire Pros uh, in Vancouver off of Highway 99. Need some good tires when you're driving in the rain, no doubt about it. 54 this afternoon, really nice, not much wind. Tomorrow, dry start. A lot of you will be in the 30s tomorrow morning, somewhere this morning in the Willamette Valley. Uh, depending on when the clouds really thicken up, we may or may not get as warm as 54. And then later in the day in the evening, that chance of rain uh, could be light rain Saturday. But then the main atmospheric river event at some point, and I'm not sure when, at some point during the PM hours of Saturday, I really do think it takes hold in the daylight hours of Saturday afternoon and then breaks up Monday. Monday is a bit of a question in terms of how much does the rain break up? But in terms of a 24-hour period, Sunday is the bullseye of the heaviest rain. And in terms of water hazards on roadways, et cetera, and rising river level concerns, especially coast range waterways, Sunday night into Monday is the bullseye of concern. And then look on the back half of this. Tuesday could be dry, maybe. Wednesday right now, mostly sunny. And the mild air stays in place, and we could hit 60. That's your update. Lots to, to uh, give you uh, updates on as we track this atmospheric river, which is expected to start on Saturday. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It helps me out. You'll be um, notified if you have your notifications turned on when I post. For now, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill.